Hello and welcome again to the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast. My name is Hobo Tom. My girlfriend is just coming home, I think, from one of her reenactments. So she's unavailable. We will hear from her later this week, though. Um, just a couple quick program notes before I get started. Um, again, there's always going to be the Raw show, the SmackDown show, probably on... Ooh, that's really... Wednesday, we're going to have Hell in the Cell predictions, because Hell in the Cell is coming up on the 16th. I do plan to have a live stream again for Hell in a Cell, so please join me then. Again, it's always fun to chat with wrestling fans. It's good. Got my Steve Fern Larson shirt. Nice, I think this was my third wrestling shirt I got. Yeah, wow. I've had this a while. So on your today, so Monday, so Sunday, I do apologize for getting late. I've, I've, I canceled my cable service to watch things online. So Monday, it's going to be Raw, Tuesday, SmackDown, Wednesday, Predictions, Friday, Lucha Underground, Saturday, probably nothing. And Sunday is going to be Hell in a Cell live stream. Ooh. So let's talk about some Lucha Underground since it is Sunday. This this, this was a weird show because I'm going to show kind of a lot of highlights. Oh, again, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Also, if you can, if you know a little bit about pro wrestling, join us in the Friendoverse. I think it's closed now, but I think there's, I think they actually have like a quiz you can take if you want to come in. But enough about that. I like to shout out to the friendos. Kind of got me back into wrestling a little a little bit. It's kind of more enjoyable to watch their show than watch wrestling sometimes. Especially Raw. Raw's a slog to go through. But this is not Raw. This is Lucha Underground. Um, they've done things a little differently for the second part of this season. Um, they're having all like the highlights and vignettes at the beginning. I'm not really a fan of that because they seem to be really long. I have my life back again. And I've been wasting it in this temple with you. We ruled the underworld together. But I never really loved you. The man I truly love gave me freedom. And I'm not throwing it away. Here's something to remember me by. Where do you think you're going? Bitch!
As we just saw. Again, this is the second time they've committed murder on Lucha Underground. It should be interesting, though. There's no more Katrina. I wonder if that was, like, out of kayfabe, a contract thing or something. But who knows? Maybe it's just for a story and she'll come back later. Um, again, it's just really weird. I mean, I liked it when they had it at the end. It was like a quick five minutes. And it was fun. It was funny. This seemed more like a Telemundo soap opera thing. And Aerostar has the ability of tra teleportation and transportation to unearthly realms. Ooh. I guess it's setting up. Uh, Halloween's about a month and a half away. We'll see. Um, so again, you just have a bunch of flashbacks. Again, Aerostar brings back Phoenix. And starts off the real wrestling show <laughs> with the El Generico band. And the only reason I called the El Generico band is because they're all wearing like El Generico masks. And Melissa Santos is back. Of course, Famous Speed did get destroyed by Matanza. And here we have Joey Wrestling, who I finally realized was Joey Mercury. And because they did reference him with Johnny Mundo as being former tag team champions. 
And I just realized that was was Mercury and Morris from the WWE, again, formerly of Eminem. And again, they were tag team champions there. I'm like, oh, I finally got that. Versus the monster Matanzo Cueno. And this is actually kind of a fun match. I mean, it wasn't a pure squash match. Matanza comes out running. I mean, Joey Wrestling tried. Oh, that's where I heard of it. Joey Mercury from Eminem. And for a while, it was back and forth. Joey even pulled a double Yano, which always makes me smile. Yano is one of my favorite New Japan wrestlers. Not the most powerful, but it's just entertaining. I, I like his antics. Always enjoyed wrestling. And then he had a pedigree, but Matanza no pulled the pedigree. And if you know saw the pedigree, you better win. And this was a good, fun match. Now, Joey Ryan's offered as... Joe, Joey Wrestling is offered as a sacrifice. Joey Ryan someone else. And he was brought back to life by Struids. Ooh. This was a fun match. It was, a, again, a cheeseburger match. And this leads to the second match, and it was weird, because there were no in-between vignettes. It was just, it, they had the whole introduction, which took a long time. And then it was match, match, match. Can't be bad. So it was Killshot versus Big Bad Steve with Brenda. <laughs> Brenda's the typical blonde-haired, way-too-high-pitched bimbo. Wrestler valet. I do like the fact, though, that they bring back the valet. That's good. Um, I, I think he, he looks like a small Brodus Clay. He has that same kind of face. But I've, it's been a while since I've seen Brodus Clay in Impact, so he might still be there. I don't know. So, oh. so again, this was pretty good. Um, Pill Shot, he starts by going out to the ankle, and it's nice that both... Matt Stryker and Vampiro referenced the fact that 
Big Bad Steve got his ankle broken by Jake Strong. And this is the reason why he's going after the ankle. Makes sense. Guys, a bad ankle, go after it. That, that's good. That's, that's smart. Ta again, tactical wrestling from Killshot. And then Son of Havoc comes out. Son of Havoc. Son of Havoc. And again, Son of Havoc's one of my favorite luchadors. He just, has, he just looks very plain. Ask, nothing flashy. Great wrestler. I, I do have to find where, where his shirts are. Because that's a pretty cool looking design. Again, if it's black. Oh, if it was a red shirt. The black design. Oh, I think that would only be like the third red shirt I own. I have a lot of black. If my tan hobo shirt and the purple Macho Man. And hopefully for Christmas, I'll, I'll get a, another Macho Man. Kind of Miami Vice colors. My, Macho Man's still my favorite. You know, this was a fun match, though, between Killshot and, again, Big Bad Steve. You know, it was pretty, pretty one-sided. I haven't seen Steve in a while, but Killshot is certainly looking to expose the weakness. Tactical gear using tactics in the ring. Oh, son of heaven comes out. We want Pops, his former partner. Matt, we talked about the significant of significance of masks and things like that. Killshot's mask isn't about honor and privilege. I personally think he's protecting an identity, almost like maybe an MI5, SEAL Team 6 kind of thing. Who knows what Killshot has done in his past? He definitely does not want to be seen here in the temple. Or who he's working for or being con contracted to do certain things. Right. Now, when we don't see Killshot here in the temple, something is going on in the world. There's a crisis here. There's a bomb going off there. Something goes down, and all of a sudden, he comes back like nothing ever happened. It leads me to believe that he is contracted by some pretty important people. A lot of curious things have gone on in our world, from Operation Paperclip to MK Ultra. Any way you look at it, Killshot is in a Lucha wow. Underground ring. That's what matters right now. Hard palm strike stuns Big Bad Steve. Vamp, what you got? Uh, there it is again, that drop kick to the knee. Reminds me of my ex-tag team partner, Great Muda. That was something that he would do. He would just take you out. There's no way to go but down. Oh, there we go. go. Recover there. No, no, no. He's being even smarter. And do, you, do you like this here? It looks like he's going to go for a modified Indian deathlock here. This tells me a lot about Killshot. We talked about where his mindset is. He's seemingly distracted with the Mac and Son of Havoc. But Killshot's wrestling acumen, his lucha-ness, dare I say it, I think it's really on point. Then Killshot obviously going over the ankle. And Big Bad Steve can really sell, and he sold the ankle throughout the match. Which is good, because sometimes like WWE wrestlers, if, if they get a bad knee, they'll, they, they'll sell it for a little bit. But then after a while, they'll just like run like nothing happened to it. So it, it's nice to see that he's actually trying to have some continuity. Again, some of having is still so good. He just comes out. Popcorn his soda just sits, just gives people popcorn. Just sits down like he's one of the guys, enjoys the match. It's really good. Um, kill shot one. Actually, a really good cheeseburger match. Yeah, mainly because of the storytelling. And of course, son of havoc. Oh, he got the mat. Um, Killshot went after Son of Havoc. 
Killshot, for some reason, ran into the ring. Son of Havoc tried to grab him, cut the mask, tore the mask off. Which is a shock because Son of Havoc is the biggest face there ever was. Or I shall use proper lucha terms. He was the biggest technico that it probably is. And he did a very rudo move in, te- in describing the mask. Again, the crowd was going bonkers. They were cheering, Derek cheering for him. This is probably going to set up at Aztec Warfare. Fans going bonkers. The fan loves it. For a mask versus mask match, which would be fun. And then the final match, you had Pentagon Dark versus Hernandez. Again, the, the fans, they're smarky because they cheer Rudo Tactics by Technico. That was a really good match. I mean, I still think the champion should always be announced last. You just want to make the challenger wait in the ring and think about it. Um, the referee had good cadence, and there were a couple two sweets for one, two, sweet. Well, that's fun. That's, that's the thing that um wasn't present in NXT. A very poor cadence. Then again, they started to announce time limits. You need a little pause. You want to get the crowd into it. And this, uh, trust me, the Lucha Underground crowd is hot, even if it's led by the El Generico band. Um, Again, starts off, Pentagon Jr. starts fast. And then Hernandez makes, makes a comeback. He's feeling it. He's got the energy. He's nothing but positive. And I hope that that doesn't affect his viciousness. Of course, Hernandez remembers that Pentagon broke Hernandez's arm. Vamp, if you're Pentagon Dark, do you, do you immediately go after the arm? I think at this stage in the game, Pentagon Dark has got so much in his arsenal that he doesn't need to specifically just go after the arm like most other wrestlers would. I think he's capable and very, very vicious. He will go after anybody part and come out ahead. Of course, Pentagon Dark hacked into the machine and dispatched Cage. Now, Pentagon Dark keeps with the, the larger opponent. Does Hernandez's size pose any problem for the champion? You know what? We were talking about this backstage. If you're going to be the Lucha Underground champion, you're going to have to take on big, small, any size. So you're going to have to accept the fact that you're going to have bigger boys than you coming after you. Absolutely. Of course, in decades past, our sport was all about, you know, the big guys, the land of the giants. But if you follow Lucha Libre, you know that the varying sizes of fighters actually make for great matches and great styles. So I think we have... Hang on. Coach. Wow. I got Melissa by my side, and she's kind of worried because this is just getting out of control right off the get go. And I don't blame her, brother. Oh. We've seen that Pentagon Dark is willing to go to any length. It's almost Kumite style, you know what I mean? You're asking about size difference. It really doesn't matter. You're going to have to take on all comers if you want to be the Kumite champion. Much like Lucha Underground. 
Hernandez well, out of the way. Pentagon rolls through, keeps the momentum, catches Hernandez on the apron, not allowing the big man to get in the ring. Now yeah, but that was a big mistake. I didn't mean to cut you off, well, dog. Because, yeah, that's because Pentagon is more concerned about the fans than he is about winning the match. Bang! There you go. Thank you very much. Excuse me. Didn't mean to cut you off. There. Hernandez shows a little attitude, a little personality, but now he's going to show some athleticism. And From there, went to a little back and forth. Again, the fans want Pentagon to win. He has some vicious sounding chops, too. I know it's just chest, but Hernandez's chest like turned red. It wasn't bruised, it was just red looking. Um, that was a good back and forth. Um, eventually, Pentagon Jr. led it's like a pump handle driver, I guess you'd call it. And then King Corno shows up. Gives him that short legged under hook tombstone pile driver on top of the belt. Says, I'm the next champion, baby. Baby! Oh, we didn't get. Oh, that's right. Next T, there was no chance to say, Adam Cole, baby! Wow, that really was a terrible show for NXT. Wow. Because this was a really good cheeseburger match. And that was really it for Lucha Underground. I mean, there was no after thing. And I would like to thank everyone for liking, sharing, and subscribing. Uh, if you viewed my videos, thank you very much. I am quickly approaching 2,000 views. And I'll have another special video when I hit the 2,000 views. And this time I'll figure out the music because I got copyrighted and had to delete some music. I have to play it softer or something. I'll figure something out. I wonder which ones. I should go back and take a look at that. Yeah, I'd like to thank everyone for viewing. Thank you for your likes, shares. Yeah, and feel free to subscribe. Again, you get content really about three to four times a week. So again, I do try and stay informed about wrestling, and I, and I do include that on the shows. Um, also, subscribe. You'll know where I'm at. You know, not this week, but next week, I'm going to see if I can possibly make it to the Sanford show. Which, it'll, it'll be a good comparison just to see if it's any different than the one in Daytona Beach. If it's the same, I can kind of judge things as to where they go. Hopefully, Amber Nova is there. And I'll show you the quick little wrestling promo card I got. Oh, shoot, I forgot that. In the kitchen. Well, I'll show you that later. And Amber Nova is featured, and she's now in NXT. Again, I'd like to, again, also feel free to email. I forgot that. You can email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. Again, thanks, everyone, for watching. Have a good night. Bye.